you're going to start it making what $40,000 a year. And you'll probably be having to live in like a main city, which that's not going to be that much money. And you're going to be stuck in this food chain at that point to where you're pigeonholed. You're the junior and you're not going to move up until it's socially acceptable for you to. Right. Right. But this way. So, and that can take five, 10 years, man. So it's like, yeah, you get to work in the industry, but it's like, wouldn't you rather just get to play around in your bedroom and become a really badass sound designer just from critically listening to your own work and re and referencing other things like the clips I sent you earlier, you can take those and, and directly compare them to, to what you're doing. You can even try to recreate some of those sounds on your own. And if you ever have problems, you can, there's, there's, there's hundreds of us online that you can come to. You can always come to me um, and say, Hey man, I tried making this sound. Here it is. What do you think? And, and get honest feedback and get honest, good advice and tips. And you keep rinsing and repeating that. And eventually, man, you've got the same experience you would have gotten after seven years of working as a junior, people are going to take time out of their day to teach you sound design at a high level. You'll have to pick it up. So why don't, why not just pick it up in your own bedroom on your own, at your own pace. And then when you go out to these people, even if you don't have shit on your record, man, even if you don't have a college degree, it doesn't matter, man. If you send someone a reel and it blows their pants off, they're going to like, yeah, I want to be a senior sound designer. This is what I can do. Right. Really? You, you did this? Yeah. You don't believe me? Give me something else. Give me a clip from what you're working on. I'll, I'll design it. And you'll know because you, you'd have spent the last year or two doing that shit over and over and over again in your bedroom. You'll be a master. And you do that and they say, all right, yeah, come in. Okay. Well, what are you going to pay me? Uh, 80. I want 100 a year. I'm a, I'm a senior sound designer. That's a fair industry rate. All right, done. You know, and then, and then you're starting at a hundred, right? And, yeah, and, and it goes up from there, of course, right? It, it goes up, but, and I know it's not all about the money, but like it's, it wears on you a little. And so it is nice to have a, a comfortable life outside of, you know, you don't want to leave that and go home to a crappy apartment for 10 years in a row. So it, it's good to feel like you're successful and, and popping off in that way. Anyway, that was kind of a rant, but that, that's kind of my strategy that I would tell people. Um, is there anything yeah, no, you want me to you. clarify or anything? I'm absorbing all this. I'm just absorbing all this information. Good. It's like really good information. <laughs> um, I'm just sitting here like, yes, <laughs> this is great. No, that's that's really interesting. I, and, I, and I could do that because I have like a, a fairly comfortable IT job right now. Um, good. And, you know, I have an okay amount of free time. And so far, I've just been making sounds like nonstop. Awesome. I guess I could just keep doing that for like a while until I get to like some ridiculous point where I'm just like, like insane i could do i like that idea just keep mastering the craft it's really all it's about man because what the trap people fall into is they fall in love with the art and then they want to feel proven so they go get a job so that they can say hey i work at you know x y and z big big company you know this is a random name, but I work at Blizzard or I work at Riot or I work at Rockstar or something, you know, these big game companies. And it's a great job to have. You know, they make amazing games. But people do that for the wrong reasons, right? They want to feel validated. Validated, exactly. And they don't want to sit in their bedroom and just feel like some loser, you know, trying to make it, you know, they want to start their career. They want to be like, hey, I did it. But yeah, that's not what it is, it. man. It's just not, it's, they're not, they didn't. They're doing their dialogue editing. They're creating, you know, they're cutting Foley. They're, and you know, that's fine. Foley's awesome. But if you want to be a sound designer and do the big stuff, um, it takes it takes a lot of dedication. And I, I really think, you know, I, I've seen people come into my own company. They, they're, they're, they're quote unquote nobodies, right? They don't have some crazy impressive IMDB reel and they don't have some big credits behind their name. They're just these guys. There's a lot of them out of Europe right now, man like Russia and stuff, these guys are sending us reels and it's like, holy crap. This guy just, they take stuff. our ads and they do their own design on them and it's like, it sounds good. It's like, good job, man. And they did it differently than us too. And those are the people we hire, right? Not the people that completely replicate what we're already doing well, but people that do it in their own way. That's a different creative take, but it's done really well. And then we go, yeah, we want to add them to our arsenal. Because then we know if we get a piece that needs that kind of style we have a guy for that so um, yeah that makes sense i i understand the um taking the clips and then putting like not just emulating the sound that's already there yeah 
Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's okay to start with that if you, if you're just trying to like figure out how to do this, shit, right? Like, how do I make this explosion sound like that one? Right? I mentioned you were have you meant you mentioned that you were having trouble with explosions. So oh, yeah, find <laughs> find the best sounding explosions from modern games and movies, you know, within the last five years or so, and listen to them and try to recreate them. And really try, like, make it so that if you close your eyes and A, B them, you can't tell which is which. Hmm. And like, that's like one to one. Yeah, like you have them on two tracks and you solo one and you solo the other and then if you close your eyes and switch back and forth, you you don't remember, you, you can't tell which one is which because they, you know, your your imitation is so similar. It's really hard to do, by the way. Don't don't think that that's an, that's an easy task sounds, I'm, I'm suggesting. Really but hard. it's a huge, it's, it's like the difference between doing 20 push-ups in your room and going to the gym and doing a full day because it's like, the knowledge you'll get of your your own library, your plugins, layering, combining, it's not even about being able to recreate that explosion. It's the lessons you learn along the way. It's the shit that you accidentally do while you're trying to make that explosion that you go, oh, wait, that's a cool sound I just made. I could use that for that. And now you have one more idea right. in the bank. So right, that makes the happy little accidents. Oh, yeah. it's It's a very... It's an exercise. Eventually you hit a wall, right? And you're like, this is impossible. I just need to start trying random shit. And that's when, you, as yes. you said, the happy accidents happen and you go, oh, wait, if I, if I compress the shit out of this and then I run it through this stutter thing and then I declick it and then I flange it, it sounds kind of like this or whatever, you know? And then it's like, um, right. then you start getting, you know, then you start becoming a real sound designer in the sense of having all these different tools you can reach for. The second, the second half of that is you also become a really good listener because you're listening to these sounds that sound nothing like this other thing and you're listening carefully to how, what parts are missing or what parts you need to add. And that becomes, that's probably even more important, right? Because anyone can learn tricks, but knowing when they sound good or when they're needed is like 80% of the game. Like most of what makes a good sound designer is someone who can sit down, look at a scene and kind of already hear it in their head, like really hear it because they've right. listened to so many similar scenes before. And then once you can do that, then you can start getting really creative and thinking, but what if instead of this typical thing that's always done, I did something like this instead, or I took this part out or something like you that. You start, so. you just throw like random samples in there until something happens. And you're like, Whoa, <laughs> well, at that point, is. at that point, you, you know, and you probably already have a bunch of stuff that you've made from random samples that you can just grab. It's a total compound effect. So it's like when you start investing, you know, you start with a little, but you keep adding it in and eventually you have this giant sum and it's like, that's when you have leverage and power and you're able to really, really kick ass and create. But don't let that intimidate you. The main thing is just knowing that you have everything you need in your bedroom to become a senior level sound designer. Something that a lot of people work for 10 plus years to be able to achieve in a traditional nine to five audio job setting. And they're not doing the best work always. They're, 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 they're trying to keep jobs. They're trying to, and some people have a great time, don't get me wrong, but a lot of the time it's, you know, grunt work type editing, which, you know, isn't the worst thing in the world, but do that for 10 years versus sit in your bedroom for two and then, become the senior hey you know yeah it's a lot of uh, <laughs> it's a lot of time skipped <laughs> it is it is it isn't and, and, it's yeah. i feel like that's this i do see the temptation to like just go out and get a job oh yeah this, you know you hey, get so excited it's what i did better man. And, you're, and you're like oh <laughs> let me jump at it 100 percent. i see i could work here i could go to work where this is made and see this project and put my hands on it and, and maybe even cut a sound or two and hear it when I when I play this game or watch this film or, or see this trailer or commercial or whatever. Yeah, it's tempting. Super tempting. It's definitely, and that's why I said it's like investing. It's hard. It's like, oh, I got I got $3,000 in my bank account. Like, Shit, I, I, I want to get a VR kit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, I could do that now, but then that money's gone and eventually the VR kit's going to get old. I'm not going to be as excited about it. Same thing, man. Yeah, I've been tempted by that VR kit many a times. Oh, I <laughs> bought I one. Yeah, all these things oh, I'm telling you. you, these are all mistakes I've made. 
by the way. <laughs> I'm sitting here having finally climbed the mountain and looking on the other side and seeing there's a staircase over there and being like, oh, shit. <laughs> so i gotta take this dude you're, you're giving me great advice right now this is great because i really am at the beginning of all this i'm, I'm glad you um, think it's good advice man um i do think it's good i guess i'll know for sure in about 10 years <laughs> i'll come back no i want to like, check in i want to check in in 18 wrong. months and 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 see you making uh more than i am and, and yeah. working on bigger <laughs> stuff because it's, it's doable like, oh, man. Yeah. it's doable it, it really is so I say it as a joke, but it's it's a real thing too. I mean, you get me excited, dude. I'm really excited. Um, Man, you should be. I gotta work harder. <laughs> That's what I hear. Is just every day we don't take breaks. Don't go to college for this. People do go to college for this. Even I was tempted. Yeah, like when course. I was doing this, because there's like um, well, I the only college I could find with this there was like two. There's Full Sail, which I know you know, uh -huh. and then there was Vancouver Film School. Yeah. In Vancouver. Yeah. And both of them were ridiculous amounts of money. Yeah. I and, was like, and EA d no. <laughs> recruits directly from Vancouver. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. That's, I think that's how I heard about them. Yeah. They have a, they, they, they kind of feed in a bit. Um, and the schools are, are good at what they do. You know, they're, they're selling a dream. And sure, school might be good for some people. Some people's minds don't work as well when they're left alone. Um, some need to be in a classroom, forced to sit there. And that's nothing against them, it's just how they're built. You know, and it takes self-knowledge to know that. Um, but a lot of people are just kind of tricked, and I almost was too. Um, I just luckily couldn't afford it because they're so damn expensive. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but they 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 throw all these you know pretty pieces of gear in front of you, and like, look at our studios, and look at our internships that we can get you when you graduate. It's like internships. You know how I got internships? I went on Google Maps, type sound design sound post, post-production sound, type all that shit, clicked on everyone, looked at what jobs they did, you know, went to their websites, looked at their clients. Everyone loves to show off the, the high-end work they've done, right? Right. And then anyone who did something that impressed me, I just wrote them down and made a list and then just constantly called and spammed and emailed all of them. And that's how I got the job that I still have today. I didn't have even you know. Always been, have you always been in LA? Yeah, I grew up here. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So I was lucky in that regard. Yeah, there's like no, there's nothing here in Virginia. I can tell you that <laughs> there's like all military. Here. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I I know companies that work that operate worldwide, and a lot of other people work remotely. So yeah, that is definitely a thing that I've been hearing a lot about. I have close friends who work on some of the very biggest games that exist, and uh, not directly on the in-game stuff, but on events that happen in the game, um, cinematics, trailers. Uh, that kind of stuff, and yeah, they just do it from their from their bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. super cool. And then you can it live is. wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, it's good. That's the dream, man. That that's where I'm headed. That's where I'm headed. It's where I'm, you'll I'm get dedicated. to for sure. If 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 you know if you keep at it, you'll get there one way or another. I just definitely hope you're able to commit and really be diligent with the study and practice of it and critical of the listening um, because it can be hard to go back and redo things it's much easier to just pick up a new scene and give it a shot give it a whirl but i was I, actually just about to ask you that at mm -hmm. what point like say for example you gave me feedback on like the link versus pit thing which is like the first thing i made like a, like a month or two months into this mm -hmm. would it even be worth it for me to go back and like try to like fix stuff or should i just do a new scene Worth it to who? Or I mean, like I guess to my development uh, of my sound design skills. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, it's how you okay. learn anything, right? Right, right. I guess I was just wondering if um, it, it like when I'm making sounds and stuff, it, it's hard for me to like find a time to put it down. And I was wondering about how much that would. I, I guess I had the thought in my mind that like i'm gonna need to be able to finish things and like put a stamp on it yes and move on to the next thing but you're gonna have to be able to finish them right and so right. it's good to get in the habit of getting getting feedback and, and making adjustments because it's one of the hardest parts especially in the beginning when you don't know really how to uh, disattach yourself from your work because it's all just this new adventure and it's like the first things you work on are kind of sacred because it's not a routine thing yet. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> and then someone def- comes in and says, no, I want you to redo this whole scene. It's it's crushing. But it's good to build those calluses up because it only makes you stronger as a professional. And so definitely, I mean, it's like, I mean, if you're learning how to do a backflip, you know, someone's going to show you, but you got to do it eventually. And so um, if you fall on your face, I'm, you know, I'll show you how to do it right. And then you need to try it again. And so I would recommend redoing as much as you can of it. That, that isn't, um, isn't, up to par uh so and 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 again you know you'll be limited until you can get some libraries as well so don't don't be too hard on yourself that you know you can't walk around your house recording some stuff and and not able to make a full fight scene out of it (laughs) because no one does that right yeah i just bought my first like big pack which was the animal sounds because i was like i can't go to a zoo right now with the coronavirus (laughs) animal sounds are good animal sounds are good um i uh i have libraries i recommend on my videos uh boom library has a lot of good libraries for beginners but they're expensive i mean there's there's one library i recommend uh called the mechanicals library and that's for metal stuff and it's not as much big metal hits it's more like metal gears and metal movement it's good for armor it's good for guns gun reloads um anything that's like a metal contraption or or thing you know um you know any foley or anything it's good for that it's like 100 bucks just for the designed pieces if you want the full thing it's like 180 or something and so it's like that's just for some metal shit. it's good stuff but it's like you know, don't beat yourself up because it's like when I'm giving you feedback, I'm basing that off a professional standard and, and most professionals have all those libraries at their disposal and it's a lot easier for us to pick through things. It's not like we just have a handful of metal recordings from our backyard that we're trying to make right. work for a whole scene. So Yeah, I would definitely want it to be the feedback on industry standard anyway. I've I've been sure. all over Boom before. I have their free library. They yeah. like give me sounds every month. Good. <laughs> no, I was going to tell you to sign yeah. up for that. That's good. I have a link yes, in the description yeah. of my videos for uh for that. Um. So yeah. Yeah, they must have good advertising because I was up there quick. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> it's <laughs> that's that's so I shouldn't. Um. Another thing that I was like that I uh like in my head, um, when I was making some sounds is that I would always kind of stay away from things that are overly things that I felt in my head that were already designed. Um, even if I was using them as a layer, because I was like, oh, this is just kind of like taking this other sound and using it. Um, so should I not worry about that as much? Don't worry about that. No. Okay. All that matters is when you're showing your reel to people, all they're hearing is what they're hearing. And sure, so, so you know, don't throw Wilhelm screams everywhere. Right. But... And there's a lot of other sounds like that. And that's why in my videos, I recommend for people to get newer libraries. Because if you go get Hollywood Edge stuff or Sound idea stuff, it's like you'll find a, a sound and think, oh, you know, and you'll use that same desert wind that's been used a thousand times mm-hmm. with the whistling. And so it's like, um, but don't don't let your conscience beat you up and hold you back in that way. Because your goal is to show that you understand what a good sounding scene is and that's your standard and what your reel shows is your standard people don't give a crap if you made the sounds from scratch if you used a library this or that it doesn't matter because it's the same thing they're concerned about right they want their product to sound as good as possible they want their studio to produce the best work yeah that makes sense so just focus on okay. how do i make this scene as good as possible don't let any ethics or weird things unless you're stealing sounds right but you know just think about okay. the scene think how, uh, how you can make it sound good and then really reference are you doing that when you're working on these things it's the last question i asked by the way and then I, ha- I have to wrap it up but um do you do you listen to scenes while you cut like when you're you know making that that sword fight scene with link were, were um you... that one i did a hundred percent actually i have but yes, I do. <laughs> I keep going back and listening and being like, oh, how did they I, I try when I listen to the scene, um, at least with the reels I've made so far um, to I don't want to copy the sound they made, but I try to take note of the approach they took to the sound um, and then kind of emulating the approach, but not necessarily 
like exactly how it sounds. Do you mind if I ask what what you were referencing? Um, sure. Like for example, um, for uh, like. Um, whenever in, in the original scene when he's running and he slides, he, he like runs at the beginning and everything's frozen in time and he slides underneath some metal. Um, in the original cinematic, they have like an accident whoosh, like when he slides underneath for the, so it's not just normal wind. It's like some sort of like electronic sound. Mm -hmm. Um, and I took note of that. So I try to make my own version of that to kind of give its own, um, electronic uh personality in the sound so when, that's what i mean like, when you make when your own version it. are you recreating theirs first or are you just making your own version of it um so i guess i'm 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 not i'm yeah i'm just making my own yeah and, but i'm taking note of uh that they did that in the first place got it yeah it's um it's hard to in games because if i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna i might get flack for this but a lot of games don't sound that great and so yeah, I'd I mean, be I very agree. selective with what you reference because personally, this is just my opinion, I, I don't think it sounds that good. I think it's very light and I think it's very um, thin. And so um, it and a lot of games have the problem where they, they kind of have this light, thin, noisy thing that's kind of almost filmic and it it, they miss a lot of opportunities for kind of impact with that. And if that's a style you like, then you can go for it. But for me personally, I guess it's a very biased feedback bit. But um, there are other games that I'd really reference that show a more full, heavy uh, soundscape that it just feels more impactful in my opinion. Uh, Call of Duty is one of them, I feel. Uh, Battlefield is another. Um, let me think. Um, Have you played um, Escape from Tarkov? I haven't, but that they did a really good job with like the realistic sound type. Yeah, that's similar with Rainbow Six Siege, them. all these different dynamic things in it. So, um, anyway, man, that's that's the gist of basically what I I would do if I was you is just keep practicing, give it to people who are credible professionals in the industry. Have them give you honest feedback and then rinse and repeat. And, you know, these people won't always give feedback like infinite, you know, spring of, of knowledge, but they should give you enough to steer you in the right direction. And then you keep building on that. And eventually those will be the same people listening to your reel and going, yeah, this is this is exactly what I want to hear. Uh, maybe not I, literal same people, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Their peers. Yeah, no, yeah, the, the group. I, yeah. I, I really like the advice you just gave me, though, about um, being selective of the trailers that he used to recreate. Cause I think that um, with the Skyward Sword gameplay thing that I showed you first, mm -hmm. um, I was really taking into account the original yep. sound of that game. And like, I don't really think that game sounds that good. It's not even, <laughs> they got some, it's they not got even cool about ideas, how the game but... sounds. It's also how it looks. It's what it, it inspires to come out. Right. But if you get something that has this modern, sleek, beautiful graphical, you know, job done on it, the sound we produce for it's amazing and it's super modern and it's super it matches so definitely pick visuals and that's why in my first lesson on my channel I, I use something as a very visually pretty scene that this guy did for his reel and that's actually a good scene too i think to really practice sound design stuff because it's all this slow motion surreal gun stuff that is hard to do but it's also very interpretable it's not just like a sword hitting a shield which is like some variation of a metal hit right and right. your in your creativity is what type of resonance or what type of impact head do I give this? You know, it's more of how do I play this gun in slow motion? Because the person who originally did it just did a, and you know what? If that played in a theater, it'd probably be fine. You know, people aren't very aware of audio who aren't in audio, but they are aware right. when it's better if you give them two things to compare, so you know it impacts them. Um, so. I did my own version of that. I'm not sure if you saw it or not, but that was like... I, I have it open right now. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> cool, yeah. So um, I, I was super tired and I just threw something together. It could punch a bit more. It could, you know, the, the gunshot and whatever, but it definitely, I think, drives the point home that it's like I just took some metal stuff and made like a slow motion gunshot from it. I mean, you can do whatever. You could take some explosions and, and break them down in cool ways and 
Um, but the point is that it, it feels big, it feels full, and it feels textured, and there's tones in there, and it has character. So all those things are very important. So a lot of the stuff I was hearing in yours was, especially in the Warframe thing, very light. And so I, I want you to think more about using low end, using impact, using some of these bigger sounds you have access to. Don't feel guilty. You know, just make it. Just think if, 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 if you met the prettiest girl in the world and she's like, you know what I like? I like guys who know how to make really badass sounding scenes. <laughs> make design this scene for me. You're like, all right, I'm grabbing those 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 library sounds for damn sure, man. Yeah. I'm not using this yeah, little yeah. metal thing I recorded. I'm grabbing this thing that these professionals did. And that's what we all do. You know? I mean, sometimes in films, right, when they need something really unique done, they go out and field record and they, you know, spend time making a very unique thing no one's heard before. But in games and, you know, and they do it for games too. But, uh, you know, a lot of the time it's at least a mixture of library sounds. And they're processed and they're manipulated and they're fun with but they're grabbing from the same place you'd be grabbing so don't hold yourself back they already have enough advantage <laughs> <laughs> gotcha gotcha yeah. okay well then i'll try to invest some more money in my libraries for sure because dude like I, I have like one good library and then the random stuff that i record in my garage mm. and then um a bunch of free stuff from gdc like gdc gave away like yeah, I probably have 80 gigabytes of GDC stuff, and Good. it's just stuff that people threw away to give away for free. Yeah, definitely um, invest in some good libraries. I wouldn't do as much super specific stuff like the animal thing, um, unless it's very cheap. I would start with just getting some good foundational libraries that just have a little bit of everything. They got some metal stuff, they got some gunshots, they got some explosions, they got some good whooshes, they got some good trailery style hits, they got some good basic foley stuff. Those are hard to find, but they're out there. And then you can start specializing if you're working on something that has a bunch of metal robots running around and you just simply don't have enough metal, then get the mechanics library, you know. Um, and that way you kind of average yourself in to the uh, to the cost instead of just going up and buying a bunch of stuff up front and then later down the road realizing, eh, I actually didn't really need this library or that one. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, makes sense. Awesome. Well, oh, dang, man. dude, I've... I'm absorbing everything you're saying as much as I can right now. Just saying you know. Good. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, man. Um, I'm taking this down as much as I can, um, and I'm gonna try to readjust my goals. I guess I should not do as many game jams as I've been trying to do because I really thought that that was the main path I needed to take, but maybe I don't need to do that because that has a lot of implementation. Like I'm doing like implementation on these like little games. I would do game jams, jams if you want to join an indie team and you want to meet people in the indie scene. Uh, game jams are a great way to do that, right? Um, right, yeah. But I mean, I if you walk really, into it... Really... Mm -hmm. so, sorry. No, sorry, no, no, go on. No, 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 you do what? Um, I do really... I think I enjoy doing the cinematic stuff like a lot more. Like I like mm. having something that I could look at and then immediately design for rather than just trying to make up some. It's pretty fun. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. fun. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and it's just right there. You hit play and that's how it's going to play. You know, it's, it's yeah, satisfying. It's, it so nice. I would do less of the game jams then if that is your view and more just reiterating on your own reel um, and collecting sounds still, you know, keep recording and stuff um, practicing, you know, do that recreation thing I told you. You know, if, if expl and do it with your weakest thing. If explosions are the hardest thing for you, don't let it become a fear. Like, tackle it. Say, okay. And if you need a good explosion reference, I will find some for you. Just reach out. Say, I need a good explosion to try to recreate. I will find a really hard explosion. And Yeah, that would be great. And, yeah, and go that. for it, man. And it's like, hey, if you fuck up, so what? You're always going to learn something. Right. Even if you don't get better at explosions, you'll get better at knowing how to make spaceships. Right. Because you'll figure something out with some kind of processing chain and be like, oh, that kind of sounds like the tone of a spaceship. I could use that as a layer. And, a, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Very true, man. Yeah, I'll <laughs> definitely do that. Then, I'm sure. telling you, man, you do that. An opportunity is going to come by and you're going to be so ready for it because you're going to be the <laughs> one that's that's been sitting there working out every night, training your skills. And someone's going to be like, oh, we need this cinematic done in two days and no one can do it. And you'll be like, two days? He's like, I can make this explosion in 10 minutes. It's like, give me that thing. Um, 
Yeah, that's super cool, man. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's the new strategy. That's it. That's cool. it right there. Awesome, man. Well, I'll, my goal. <laughs> let's stay in touch, and uh, I'll be um I'll be around if you ever need me. Hit me up on Discord, and uh, yeah, you know, just just uh, I'm here, man. I'll dude, check I... in with you. Make sure you're staying you're staying accountable with it. <laughs> I will use you, dude. Be careful. I will be like, hey, man, what does this sound? What do you think about this? Look, if I ever get annoying, just be like, dude, shut up. <laughs> no, please leave do, me alone. Man. No, it's I all will. Good. I'll start annoying you because I don't, you know, I got like not many very, you know, I don't have very many sound people that I can ask questions like this. I only know like, um, actually, no, I don't know anybody else who does this professionally. There's, there's so no I will one. Use you. It's a small field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, please do, man. Please do. Never hesitate yeah, to reach awesome. out. Keep going after it and uh, you'll make it, dude. I, I swear. It's way faster than you think. So, Dude, that's the plan. Dude. I'm telling you, man. Give me, <laughs> Give me three years. Just wait. Just wait, man. I'm be giving the same conversation to someone else. I'd never. I would. I'm not doubting you one bit, man. You're gonna do it. Thanks. <laughs> I got this, dude. Awesome. You like reinvigorated my drive, even though it was already like almost at 100. <laughs> that's that's so like good to hear, man. It's like 300, dude. I got this. I'm about to just stay up. <laughs> I'll be up till 6 a.m. making some sound tonight, dude. Go for it, man. <laughs>